Stock Mazda RX-3 brake calipers. Gonna stick with them because I'm going to put a naturally aspirated 12A engine in. So there's no reason to make this thing like it's gonna have a 500 horsepower 13B turbo or anything like that. So, here we go. Wow, those are good pads. I think I'll use them again. Not! I want to keep my car mostly original. I'm going to stick with original equipment, Mazda front brakes, and most of this front suspension is going to stay the same. So I've done a little parts shopping for brake calipers and things like that. Not too happy with what I find online for brake calipers, so I'm going to rebuild my own. It's not hard, and uh, I can get better results, and I can have it the color I want it, and all that stuff. So, let me show you what we got. So when you rebuild a brake caliper from our Mazda, you know, there's different caliper kits you can get. The most important part is this rubber boot here. So all of the kits out there include the dust boot, the seal, and the retaining clip. But they don't all include the rubber boot for the sliding mounting bracket. They don't all include the rubber plug that caps the opposite cylinder for the sliding mounting bracket. So in order to clean these, I'm going to use uh, a bead blaster. I'm leaving the pistons in. I don't want any blast media inside the cylinder. I'm also plugging where the brake hose goes. OEM brake calipers are essentially three pieces. There's the main housing with the piston and caliper, there's the back plate, and there's the adjustable slider. These are fresh out of the blast cabinet and ready for the powder coating. I'm going to be powder coating my brake calipers now. When I sandblasted the floating sliders from my caliper, I covered them with uh, high temp tape. I don't want to sandblast the highly polished surface underneath there. The reason I use acetone is look how fast it evaporates. It leaves nothing behind. temperature tape does really well at sticking even at 400 degrees curing temperature for the powder. Get the protecting foil out of the slider shaft cylinder. Other things that got powder coated. This is the shield for the fuel pump. On a 76 RX3, the fuel pump is not located in the trunk. It's located under the left rear wheel well, so it needs a shield to protect it from road debris and dust. And then here we have a metal plate that protects clutch, fuel, and brake lines underneath the car. We need to remove these pistons that haven't budged for 30 years. This is from a, a 76 Mazda that has been sitting since 1986, so they're pretty solid. I've tried compressed air through the brake line port. No luck. First, we're going to plug the hole where the brake line connects. 
I've got a metric bolt in the brake hose threads here. So this bolt fits in pretty loose. I gotta put Teflon tape on there. I don't want any grease leaking out. Next, loosen the, the bleeder. So then uh, you get your grease gun, plug in, and away you go. And little by little, out it comes. I see there's some scoring on the piston there. So clearly I'll be honing the cylinder pretty good. It's out. The power of hydraulics. The bleeder screw, of course, is loaded with grease now. I'm going to be putting brand new bleeder screws in mine, so bleeder screws are cheap. Just get new ones. isn't bad. Just scoop it out of there. Nice paper towel or a shop rag. Now there's grease in the passageways of your caliper. So on my caliper, this little hole here is where the brake bleeder was bringing the grease in. So there's probably a spot of grease inside there. There's going to be a little channel of grease in here where the brake bolt was. This is where the brake hose connects to the caliper. I had the bolt placed in there, so we need to squirt those clean. There we go. So we've framed this little hole of the little chunk of grease that was stuck in there. Use brake fluid and brake fluid only to lubricate your honing stones. So everything gets lubed with brake fluid. A little brake fluid in a little dipping pan here. Square cut seal goes in the caliper cylinder right inside the groove. It's nice and smooth all the way around. So I've got two kits here. This is Mazda RX3, original equipment. Raybestos WK1114 is the pro grade kit. Pro grade kit comes with the new rubber boot. The new rubber boot goes down this shaft here. My opinion, you need that. Next. This is the slider boot for this, uh, you know, smaller shaft. Goes right through here. Just like that. Just keep it right here. Okay, pistons, Raybestos, DPS, 85037s. New pistons were about 14, 15 bucks a pop. Nice and shiny. Lube up the side of this piston. And just spread the dust boot all the way around the ridge here. I want to make sure it's all the way around that lip before I go put my retaining clip on. There we have it. 
by human hands. It's still untouched by human hands. I'm wearing gloves. Get the dust boot started. these shafts here with sill glide. Reason is is that's a metal shaft but it's also going into a rubber boots. So sill glide is really good to lubricate rubber. So if metal and rubber are coming together, that's a good choice. Should glide real well. That's why it's called sill glide. I did need to jack and double jack. No washer on the bolt. The pads are Friction Master NX172s. Extra clip goes here. Only one caliper off the silver car had that extra clip. That leads me to believe the other side had been changed out at one point. And neither caliper on my green car, which is a 74, neither caliper had the extra clip. Don't know what that's for, but I'm putting it back on because I have one. I could just scrounge me up another one. I'd put it on the other side. There's a torque specification for this. I don't know what it is. I'm gonna find out. And then I'll torque it. But for now, here we go. Ain't she birdie? All right, bitches. Next, where's my goop lube? So Silglide is the perfect thing to lube up these rubber sleeves. Sure you could use other types of grease, but this is what I used because Silglide is specifically formulated to not damage rubber. This one doesn't have that extra clip. It leads me to believe that the right caliper was traded out sometime in its life, or an earlier model. Once again, there's a torque spec for these bolts. Don't know what it is. I'll look it up. But for now, there we have it. Don't you hate it when you get things all together and there's extra parts sitting there? Damn it. I gotta pull this thing apart now and put this little seal and retaining clip in.
Got a brand new seal and retainer for this right here. Came in my rebuild kit. I got a little carried away putting my brake pads back on. Seal comes right out. Pull out the retainer. The seal has a square, has a little notched cut on top. I'm gonna dip it in some brake fluid. right in, retainer, and now the vent cap, plunger vent cap, goes right here. All I need now? New bleeders. I don't know why it was so hard to find brake bleeder screws for this brake caliper. It's 8 by 1.0 threads. Now when you go to places like Rock Auto or any auto parts store, you can get them. They think they're a Raybestos S23 925. Wrong. Those are 10 by 1.0 or 125 threads. Too big. Another catalog showed uh, some 7x1.0 thread. Again, wrong. Too small. Raybestos S22068. Wrong. 7x1.0. You know, I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. There's lots of parts stores here. Are you kidding me? No one had it. And I went to many, many stores, even clutch and brake uh, specialty shops. Finally, someone was able to figure out that it was a specific Carlson number. So a Carlson H9416 truly is an 8 by 1.0 fine thread bleeder screw. That's what we need. One last note about the brake calipers. You know these brake pad guide pin retaining clips? Those stick up quite a bit. Original equipment Mazda had low profile clips. So I think what I'm going to do is send those off to the platers. I've got a whole batch of stuff going to the platers tomorrow. So this is perfect timing. I can replate those low profile clips and use them again. Yeah, that's what I think I'm going to do. Otherwise I got these big old honkin' ones that came in, um, you know, hardware kit.